Did you ever think about the extinction of dinosaurs? Not the prehistoric reptile, the TV show from the 90s. I do. Not a lot, but more than I feel comfortable admitting. The TV show Dinosaurs ran for four seasons from 1991 to 1994. Word on the street is that this show was Jim Henson's dying wish. And I'm exaggerating, but not as much as you might think. Supposedly, Jim Henson came up with this idea in 1988, and he kept pitching it, but studio executives basically kept telling him, that's crazy talk, Jim. No one's gonna wanna watch an animatronic sitcom about a family of dinosaurs. That's how I imagine studio executives talked in 1988. But Jim Henson kept working on this show until his sudden death in 1990. It's hard to know exactly how much of a passion project this was for Jim Henson, because you better believe that when the show eventually aired, one year after his death, the marketing heavily promoted the fact that this show was his idea. Despite the fact that it was insanely expensive to make each episode of Dinosaurs, ABC wasn't super involved in the production. According to the LA Times, rumors said that each episode of Dinosaurs cost between one and one point five million dollars. And that was 30 years ago in 1991. Like, there are definitely shows that have cost more, but that's still very expensive. And for each 23 minute episode, they had to do 65 hours of filming per week. That, that feels like a lot. But this lack of oversight is probably how Dinosaurs got to be such a weird show in the first place, with a wild series finale. Like, the type of thing that is just completely unheard of in the realm of primetime family sitcoms. These main characters were dinosaurs, right? And what happened? To the dinosaurs? This series, which audiences watched for four seasons, ends with this family. A father, a mother, a teenage son and daughter, and a baby staring down the inevitability of their own deaths. Imagine The Simpsons ending the same way. Like, Homer screws something up with a nuclear power plant, which is now about to explode and set off a chain reaction that will destroy all of humanity. And you just see Homer, Marge, Bart, Lisa, and Maggie sitting in their home, completely helpless as they just watch through the window, waiting for the inevitable end. So I would like to recap for you the first episode of Dinosaurs, and then I'll throw in some Dinosaurs fun facts, and then I will recap the last episode of Dinosaurs. Okay, episode one opens with reminding us that Jim Henson came up with this idea. That tracks. It starts with the dad, Earl Sinclair, sitting down to watch TV when he is interrupted by the baby. I'm sorry! Give me that back. Story. No story. Story. Who is just called Baby. I wonder if this is like a dirty dancing kind of situation where Baby is just a nickname, but he's actually called like Francis. Anyway, through the framework of Earl telling a story, we get a flashback to a time that I'm assuming was not really that long ago. It shows a typical evening in the Sinclair household. The wife, Fran, is making dinner, but dinner escapes. Why is there not dinner on the table, Fran? Hey! hey. Whoa! Was that dinner? Did dinner just run out of here through my legs? She nags at Earl to buy her a creature screen for the cookware. 
They've got these new pots and pans with creature screams. If you love me, you'll get them for me. Do you love me? Preteen daughter Charlene asks her dad for money to buy a sweater. A sweater? I just want a sweater. And I just want dinner, and it don't look good for either one of us. Teenage son Robbie is a cool guy in a letterman's jacket, bringing home a terrible report card. Here's my report card. I'll see you around the swamp. Ow! I knew it. Says here you don't apply yourself. Earl plays into the trope of a beleaguered husband returning home from a long day at work who is upset that there isn't a hot meal on the table waiting for him and that his wife is nagging at him for new cookware when he's decided that he absolutely cannot live without a 90-inch TV. Because for once, there is something I want. It's unbelievable that I should actually want to spend my money on something for me. Something I no longer feel I can be without it. What's that? A 90-inch television set. Yes, they have TVs. And a freezer. And a stove. This isn't like a Flintstones thing where it's Stone Age parodies of modern conveniences. Like, th this is the actual technology. And Earl's wearing a buffalo plaid shirt. So everyone wants something. Earl wants a TV, Fran wants new cookware, Charlene wants a sweater, Robbie wants a tutor. Well, Robbie doesn't want a tutor, but like, Robbie needs a tutor. And there is just not enough money for all of these things. By the way, the show features the late Jessica Walter as the mom, Fran Sinclair. There's also the implication that this type of domestic lifestyle is fairly new to dinosaur society. Like, they apparently used to just live in the woods and eat their families. Earl does have a job. Uh, he works as a tree pusher for the We Say So Development Corporation. But he is only paid $4 an hour, so he decides to ask for a raise from this guy. Why aren't you out there knocking down trees? That's Guts Ball, Sinclair. I like a guy who plays Guts Ball. Like it! What? Anyway, his boss tricks him into quitting. So you got no alternative but to look me in the eye and say, I'm sorry. I quit! I quit! Oh, well, sorry to lose you, Sinclair. Earl goes home. He is frustrated. Fran suggests that he ask her about her day. And Earl literally tells her that he does not give a damn. Look, Fran, I say this with all love and everything, but I don't give a damn about your day. He gets really condescending. Nothing that happened in your little day has any impact on how I'm going to live the rest of my life. And then Fran reveals an egg. It's the dinosaur equivalent of being pregnant. And Earl freaks out. In my 60s, Fran. I'm going to be in my 60s before I get my life back. Fran wants to decorate the baby's room in a caveman motif, and this is funny to me because I know several people who had dinosaur-themed baby showers. For those of you that watch some of my other videos, yes, in the, the Ergo video where I was hungover and going to a baby shower that day, the baby shower was, in fact, dinosaur-themed. The episode cuts back to Earl telling the story to the baby, and... Obviously, this is the story of when the baby was born, and the baby, being a baby and thus inherently selfish, only cares about when he appears in the story. Am I in the story yet? Well, I went back to the forest to see if we were right. I'm gonna bite you now. <laughs> so Earl, within the, the flashback story, goes into the forest to try and recapture how dinosaurs used to live before they had families. The wilderness of my ancestors, where my spirit belongs and my soul longs to be. Jeez, it's cold! There, Earl encounters the creature that his family was supposed to eat for dinner the other night that managed to escape. Apparently, this creature used to live in that forest before his home was destroyed by tree pushers, like Earl. And now the creature has lost his family and can't find them. I, I don't know where my family went. Look, 
Just eat me and get it over with. Earl's like, good, you're better off without him. And then the creature decides to talk some sense into Earl. But to tell you the truth, my family's all that listens to me. My house is the only place in the world where I'm the boss. Except the sense is that nobody in the world listens to you, and at home you can be the boss and tell your family what to do, so without your family, you're nothing. But even then, Earl does not go home of his own accord. Fran has to lure him home with a tray of food tied to a string. That's Fran's Mastodon surprise! Out here in the wilderness, I'm saved! <laughs> None of this aged particularly well. And uh, by the way, I did not approach this thinking like, haha, I am going to critique dinosaurs through the lens of modern media standards. It's just a different type of tone than what I vaguely remembered, and I can't figure out if it's more of a married with children type of show where this over the top ironic portrayal of these tropes is supposed to be part of the comedy. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think this show needs to be viewed within the context of its time, which is the 90s, not 60 million BC. The next day, Earl goes to get his job back, and he discovers that the creature now works for his boss. How you doing? No family, here all day and night, nowhere else to go, perfect executive material. The creature is grateful that Earl didn't eat him, so he helps Earl both get his job back and get a very small raise. And as we approach the end of the episode, we get the moral of the story. No matter how low you are in this world, as long as you have a family to come home to, well... They're lower. Then the egg hatches, and the baby falls onto the floor. <laughs> Dropped on his head, right from the get-go. <laughs> he can also talk. Hi, I'm the baby, brand new, just out. Gotta love me, come on, gotta love me. By the way, the baby is officially named Baby later in the series. I looked it up. We also see cavemen invent the wheel and subsequently the hula hoop. The end. Can I tell you, I vaguely remember seeing this show as a kid, and I always recalled that the dinosaurs were just people in dinosaur suits. And that's partially correct. There is a person physically inside those suits, but it actually takes three people to bring just one of the dinosaurs to life. There is a person in the suit, there is a puppeteer controlling the fully electronic facial expressions, which was also considered like a technological marvel for the time, and then there is also the voice actor. So that is insane. No wonder this show was so expensive. Although, when I was researching this, there were several sources that called the dinosaurs full-bodied animatronics or full-sized puppets. So I did double and triple check to confirm that yes, there were people physically inside of the suits. Look at this photo of the head. Horrifying. Here's some behind-the-scenes footage of people in their costumes, dancing, having fun, and headless Earl. It's like that scene in Game of Thrones where Joffrey takes Sansa to look at her father's head on a pike. Also, Robbie the Dinosaur always reminds me of this SNL skip. Cause I first got horny to you. Disconcerting, but also catchy. Now it's in your brain, too. Let's see, some other dinosaurs facts. There's an episode called Little Boy Blue that introduces the purely fictional concept of a were-man. 
it's sort of like a werewolf, but the dinosaur would be bit by a caveman and thus turn into a were-man. I say purely fictional because while this whole show is purely fictional, the concept of a were-man is introduced as a scary story and is not intended to be like an actual plot. It's just something being told to frighten the baby. Detective Stabler, Christopher Maloney, for those of you who don't watch SVU, also voices a character named Spike, who appears in later episodes. Uh, Spike is Robbie's best friend. Uh, now, have you seen her talking to any other males? You mean like boyfriends? Any other males? Well, she was just talking to Mr. Pullman, the science teacher. Kill him. Okay, now let us recap the last episode of Dinosaurs. The last episode, called Changing Nature, opens with a news report. The anchor, Howard Hand Up Me, and I really hope that's a puppet pun, is talking about the annual migration of the bunch beetles. The Sinclair family is having a barbecue, the grill has a digital LED readout, and no, I will not get over just how modern this technology is, I think it's weird. They didn't even give the grill or the LED readout some sort of weird, fun, dinosaur pun name. They're just like, yep, LED. The bunch beetles will be here any second, so stop this or you'll miss the beautiful display. Oh, you want to talk about beautiful display? Look at this LED readout. Earl's apron says chefs do it on hot coals. Okay, so the family is watching the news while they wait for the migration of the bunch beetles. Like, apparently it's a whole thing. You see them fly overhead. It's very pretty. And the news report also mentions that the bunch beetles eat a type of weed known as a cider poppy. Except the beetles don't show up. And the aforementioned cider poppies begin to grow everywhere. Now stop yapping and help me cut these darn poppies. Oh yeah. 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 Finally, a single bunch beetle shows up. And not only is it single, but it's ready to mingle. Look, I got one thing on my mind right now, and it ain't salad. The Shaboing! Hello, beautiful! Hey, 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 that's my daughter! We also learn that it is the baby bunch beetles that eat the cider poppies. So the bunch beetle that showed up, his name is Stan, he needs to find the swamp since that is the bunch beetle mating ground. And Charlene, after some mild harassment from Stan, decides to show him the way. What is it? You afraid I'm too short for you? Look, Stan, you're an insect, I'm a reptile. It's not gonna happen. Except the swamp is gone. It has been replaced by a waxed fruit factory, a division of the We Say So Corporation. And remember that this is the corporation that Earl works for as a tree pusher. You call this a swamp? <gasps> it was right here, but they paved over your mating ground and put up a waxed fruit factory. So not only is the swamp gone, but the company seems to be actively killing the beetles. <laughs> the beetles. Oh, it's another uh, one of those bugs. I uh, thought we killed them all. Stop! This is a bunch beetle. Charlene and Stan go to the media. Their callous pursuit of profit has resulted in the utter destruction of an entire ecosystem. Of which I am a part. Earl is not happy about this. He busts into the interview and gives a decidedly pro-capitalism rant that is completely ignorant of all of the ecological damage. They're interviewing me! Oh yeah? Well, it's time for a responsible opposing viewpoint. What? You're all full of it! Oh! Progress is good! It is rare for a show to be so explicitly clear about their messaging. Like Earl gives this rant and he is also very specifically portrayed as an idiot. Like uh, microwave toast. Yeah. Great. Yeah, you want to talk about progress? This takes all the guesswork out of making toast. 
<laughs> At the behest of We Say So Corporation, Earl leads a civilian task force that is determined to get rid of the cider poppy problem by coating the entire planet in a chemical weed killer. So the weed killer does kill all of the cider poppies. However... Have you looked outside? That spray of yours killed every plant on Earth! <laughs> Earl still does not understand the ramifications of his actions. Your stupid spray killed all plant life! Hey, what are you complaining about? You never like salads anyway. To try and fix the plants, they decide that they need rain. And for rain, they need clouds. So they're going to create clouds by setting off a bunch of volcanoes using bombs. Earl is starting to catch on that they may not be making the correct choices here. But sir, our last quick fix solution sort of backfired on us, huh? Maybe we should think twice before unleashing the unholy fires of hell. But they proceed with the plan. And the clouds from the volcanoes end up blocking out the sun and causing temperatures to drop. Unfortunately, once again the task force's latest tactic has gone tragically awry, as thick black clouds of sulfurous gas and soot now shroud the entire planet. Yikes! However, this cold snap means extra profits for We Say So. Dinosaurs are flocking to stores buying We Say So heaters, We Say So blankets, and We Say So old-fashioned hot cocoa mix. <laughs> We're gonna have the best third quarter in history! The boss chastises Earl for caring about the environment. Oh, don't turn into one of those environmental doomsayers, Sinclair. Boo-hoo, it's raining acid. There's a hole in the ozone. You're hurting Flipper. And laughs menacingly as he flings around his stacks of money. <laughs> Earl apologizes to his family for his role in their ultimate destruction. I guess I owe the rest of you an apology, too. You know, for bringing on the end of the world and civilization and everything. The message of this episode is so clear that I am legitimately impressed that they got this on air in the 90s. Daddy was put in charge of the world. And he didn't take real good care of it. And now it looks like there won't be much of a world left for you or your brother and sister to live in. The baby asks if they're going to move. And Earl says that they can't. They have nowhere to move to. No. There's no place to move to. This is the only world we got. And then the baby asks, What's gonna happen to us? And Earl and Fran exchange this long, significant look on their weird rubber faces. The family assures each other that they will stick together no matter what. And then Earl says this. After all, dinosaurs have been on this earth for 150 million years. And it's not like we're going to just disappear. And then the camera pans back, and we see the snow coming down heavily outside. Their entire home is covered in snow. The last shot is a TV broadcast predicting more snow, extreme cold, and darkness. This is Howard Hand Up Me. Good night. Goodbye. The implication being that everyone dies. This family that audiences watched for several years either starves or freezes to death in their home. The baby, whose birth kicked off this entire series, never gets to grow up. Like I said earlier, can you imagine The Simpsons ending this way? I don't know if I have the interest or patience to watch every episode from all four seasons, 
But I do think that this show was interesting on several levels. There was the complexity of the dinosaur costumes, the ecological messaging, the general weirdness. I wonder what the equivalent show would be today. Like, is there a modern iteration of dinosaurs? I can't think of anything this similar. Like, with all of those components combined. Like, some sort of weird visual aspect, um, just very unusual storytelling, while also being portrayed as a very standard type of program. Like, I, I don't think there is a modern equivalent of dinosaurs. I mean, at least until they reboot it, like, they reboot everything. Talking about the ending of this series is a really depressing way to end a video. So, let's look at more clips of the actors dancing. Dancing! Everyone's happy! Our planet isn't slowly deteriorating. Yay! I feel like I put the camera like closer to me than usual. Normally I don't move this setup, but I had someone come over. So I like broke down my little film setup and put it away. And now I put it back and like, I tried to match it to the indents in the carpet, but I don't, I don't think I succeeded. It feels so close. Are you guys always this close to me? <laughs> Hello.